Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to create a node group that I'm calling a guided loft node. The idea behind this node is that you would have a series of curves that you would be able to loft, but the order they're lofted is guided by a separate curve. I'll explain more as we go, but let's get into it. For this video, I'm going to be using Blender 3.4 beta as some of the nodes from 3.3 have changed a little bit and I want this video to be usable going into the future. The idea in this video we want to accomplish, let's say I have a curved circle and I want to designate some sort of profile. This might take on a shape that looks something like this. But what if instead I wanted to have the loft do this instead? One way would be to make sure that I create the curves of the profile in a very specific order. The problem then is, if I wanted to insert a curve here later, I would have to recreate all of them, because now this one would be out of order. So instead, I want to create an object that designates the order in which these are supposed to be connected. So it might do something like this. Or the same set of curves could be used to make something like this. Either way, it would give you a bunch of artistic freedom. My approach for doing this in geometry nodes is going to go something like this. I'll want to have a cylinder, and that cylinder will have enough cuts up and down to go with each loop, and then each ring of the cylinder will be connected to a curve inside this curve object. In the end, giving us something like this, that of course we could apply a subdivision surface to, and end up with a model that looks like this. The question is, how are we going to accomplish this? My thought was if I could create a control curve that had as many points as I have curves in my original object, then I could find out which ring each point of this guide curve is closest to. So this point, point zero, is closest to a point on this first ring. The next point is this one, the next point is this one, and so forth and so on. We could then transfer that index back over to the original curves object and use that in place of the spline number. Once we have that information, we can use that to set the positions of each vertex of our cylinder. So that's what we're going for. We'll use these objects in our project. Now this one's going to get a little hairy, so stick with me. The first thing we'll want to do is for each point on our source curves, we're going to want to associate which curve index they come from. So I'll add a capture attribute node, set it to integer and point. Now the value we want to capture for each point is the curve of that point. So under curve topology, we can use the curve of point node. We'll connect the index here and then we'll add an input index node to drive the point index. Now if we view this and go to our control points, we see that for each control point, we have the number of its source curve. Now what we want to do is for each one of these points in the original source curves, is we need to look at our guide curve, figure out which point it's closest to. So I'll add an object info node and I'll connect it to my input. I'll then choose my Bezier curve. So what we'll do is we'll sample the index of our original curve based on the points from our guide curve. So I'll duplicate my capture attribute node and plug in the geometry. We'll do a geometry sample index node and set it to integer. We'll connect this geometry to sample index node. So what we want to sample is the curve number from our original set of curves which is stored in this capture attribute. But what index do we want to actually sample? Well, we want to sample the index that's nearest to each point of our guide curve. So we'll add a sample nearest node. The geometry we want to sample are our original source curves. And our sample position is just going to be an input position node. Keep in mind that with the sample nearest node, the input geometry goes to the index output. So the index you're getting here is from the input geometry. However, 
the sample position is actually from the forward field, much in the same way that in the sample index node, the geometry and value come from the sampled geometry, but the index is also from the field going forward. So plugging this in here, this position is from the field coming forward, not the one going backwards. So it flows this way. This index is the same way, so it goes forward. Finally coming to this capture attribute, where this is referencing this incoming geometry. If I go ahead and view the output of this capture attribute node, you'll see that my viewer is all zero, but you'll also see that I now have an error on my sample nearest. That's because since I've plugged it in, this is finally being evaluated. And once it's evaluated, it realizes that the input geometry are curves and sample nearest only works with a mesh or a point cloud. So we're gonna need to turn this curve into a mesh before we can sample it. That's okay. We can just use a curve to mesh node. And then instead of using the curves for our sample index, I can use this mesh. You can see that my preview curve is offset from the original version. That's only because my object info wasn't set to relative. So I can continue to see what's going on. I'm going to join this output and this output. So we can see the points of our guide curve are lining up with zero through six because that's the order I created the curves in. But let's go ahead and swap a couple of these curves. So now that I changed the positions of those last two curves, this one and this one, we can see in our viewer that the points of our guide curve are connected to source curves zero through four, then six, then five. So now we wanna tell each one of the splines within our original curve object what order it should actually be in, rather than using its own index. So I'll capture a new attribute on my original curves and set it to spline. I'll get this value from sampling my guide curve. I'll use my guide curves geometry and this captured attribute, and then I'll simply use an input index node. So since we're gonna have the same amount of points on our guide curve that we have splines in our original curves, so this index should line up between the splines of our original curve and the points of our guide curve. So now if I view this node and I go to my splines, we can see the spline number here but we can see their order here, where the last two have been reversed. If I were to change these points to something like this, we can see that they've gone back to the way they were before because that's the order I had changed them to. What I'm gonna do is take this order attribute and send it to my group output and name it spline order. I'll rename this input to guide curve and this one to profile curves. I'll name this node order by guide and save it. I'm now gonna remove this tree from these curves and add a new one. Then I'll immediately add an order by guide node. I'll add this input and then set this to my guide curve. There, we'll name those just to make things easier. With a viewer on this now, we can see the order that we're going to evaluate these in. Now that we have this, we can start positioning our cylinder. So I'll add a mesh primitive cylinder. We're gonna to wanna to be able to control the resolution around our loft, so we'll connect up the vertices. The side segments will be the spaces in between each curve. So there'll be one less side segment than there are curves. We can of course get this number from our geometry using a domain size node. We'll set it to curve and use the spline count. Of course, I said we want one less, so we'll add a math node and subtract one. For now, we'll remove the top and bottom. If I output these, you'll see what we have. Now we wanna go about matching the vertices of our cylinder up with each one of our profile curves. So we'll need a set position node, and then we need to sample our curve to get the position of for each point. So to do that, we'll use a curve sample curve node. The value we want out of our curve is the position. 
and the curve we want to sample is our incoming curves. But what about the factor and the curve index? Since we're not using the value output, we don't have to worry about the value input here. But how do we determine the factor and the curve index? Well, let's first look at our factor. Based on the index of the points around each ring of the cylinder, we can determine how far around the circle that given point is. Let me explain. If I take an index node, and we use this for the sample curve, this index is going to be coming from our forward geometry, so our cylinder in this case. So this will go from zero to the number of points in our cylinder, which is actually 224. Now, if we take that and we use a modulo operator on it, and then we use this number of vertices, which is the number per ring, we can now tell which point on each ring we're currently at. So this number will go from zero to 31. If we then take that number and divide it by that same number of vertices, we'll now get the percentage of the way around the ring it is, no matter which ring it's on. So this will be our factor. But what about the curve index? So if we take our index and we divide it by our resolution, this will give us our spline number with some kind of remainder. Well, to get rid of the remainder, we simply need to use floor rounding. So say our resolution was 20 and the index was 10, this division would be 0.5. When we floor that, we get zero, so we're in ring zero. If the index was 40 and we divide that by 20, we get two, so we'd find out we were in ring two. So we can now use this as our curve index. Now immediately we see a problem. This isn't being evaluated in the order that we wanted. This is being evaluated in the current order of the splines. That's because we never accessed this spline order that we put in our order by guide. Let's add some space to our geometry trees here and move this back. But how are we gonna get this from the original curves based on this? Well, we can get this value by sampling the curve. If I pull out another sample curve, this time we wanna pull out a value. That value is an integer and it's the spline order. We wanna use these same values we had here for our factor and curve index. So now this value is going to be coming from our spline order. So for each index of our cylinder, we now know which spline to sample from. So when we go to sample the position, we don't want the curve index of the implicit ring number that we got here. We want it from this one that we created using our order. Of course, as I plug this in, I realize that I never connected my guide curve back up here. Sorry about that little mistake. So now that I have this, if I go back in and change my guide curve, I can now change the order of my loft very easily. If I wanna be able to visualize my original curves, I can simply join geometry between my original input and my final geometry. And because the order that the splines were added has no bearing in what order they're lofted, I can go into my original curve, add something new, go to my guide curve, add a new subdivision, line it up with my new curve, and there we go. Now that I have this, I'm gonna name this node Guided Loft and mark it as an asset. I'm gonna remove it one more time, add a new node tree, add a Guided Loft node, and then I could do something like this. I could add a subdivision surface node. A set shade smooth node. And then I could set up a simple solidify node.
If you're interested in the solidify node, I have another video where I go over that. One last interesting thing we can do is because we're lofting these using the factor and not the points of our source curves, they don't have to match. In fact, if I were to take these two and subdivide them, and then do a checker deselect, and bring these points in, and then the same here. You'll see that we can create some interesting patterns. So there it is. I hope you got something out of this tutorial if nothing other than to take a look at the sample nearest and the sample by index nodes. If you'd like the project file for this video, you can get it at my Patreon. I'll have a link down in the description. And speaking of Patreon, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons. Your support is really meaningful and really encouraging for these videos. If you want to support the channel and the work I'm doing here, you can go to my Patreon. You can go to my Gumroad page, where there's a lot of pay what you want assets available there. And thirdly, you can check out the affiliate links I have listed in the description. These are from our channel sponsor, XP Pen, whose pen display I've been using for about two years and it's holding up great. There's also a link for this pen display glove, which is super cute and also available from XP Pen. So if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. And I hope you've learned a lot from this video. I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.